Hi, this is Dan Gilmore, Supply Chain Digest and the Supply Chain Television Channel. I'm very pleased to be here with another one of our ongoing Supply Chain Thought Leadership video discussions today on the topic of multi-echelon inventory optimization. That's a bit of a mouthful, but it's one of the hottest areas of supply chain software right now. I believe it's giving some companies competitive advantage versus the rest of the market. There's no one really better here to talk about the su subject of inventory optimization today with than, uh, than Sean Willems. He is currently uh, the Chief Science Officer at Legility. He's also an Associate Professor in the School of Management at Boston University. And he was co-founder of Optient, one of the pioneers in inventory optimization technology that Legility bought in 2010. He's coming to us today from uh, campus in uh, Boston. Uh, Sean, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks, Dan. I'm happy to be here. You know, this is one of the most interesting areas of supply chain technology today to me currently. We've done quite a bit of, uh, with it in Supply Chain Digest. You know, it's been around, what, 10, 12 years, something like that. Many companies, Hewlett Packard, Procter & Gamble, dozens of others have found big success, yet it is not that well known or understood. And so I think this is going to be a great opportunity today to really help educate our, uh, our viewers about this a little bit. I'm going to give you my sense of what it is, and then I'm going to ask you to really kind of, you know, put some, uh, uh, you know, some finer points on that. I'm going to start by saying sort of what problem it's trying to solve, and that is that traditional supply chain planning systems, as many people don't know, frankly, uh, or, you know, APS systems, as they're sometimes called, really can only look at one level or echelon, that's where that uh, echelon term comes in, at a time, sometimes even a single node, and that they really can't understand the upstream and downstream impacts of those decisions, and so what you get is kind of what I'd call local optimization. Inventory optimization software, on the other hand, can look across those levels or echelons, really understand the entire inventory picture, in theory from you know, supplier, supplier to customer's customer, and really solve that problem, as I said, in a more holistic fashion so that you're really right-sizing that inventory up and down the chain. Uh, that's my take on it, my understanding. Uh, what would you add to that? Yeah, Dan, I think that's a, that certainly is a good characterization. Uh, this problem, multi-echelon inventory optimization, it is, as you say, it's optimizing inventory levels and locations across the supply chain. The only piece I'd probably add to it is that we need to marry it with the existing technology that already exists in the company. So these companies have made big investments in APS systems, so we need to sit on top of that APS system and work with it, as opposed to be something sort of off in the corner. But beyond that, I think your explanation's spot on. And I guess the, the secondary point to what you just said there is it also means you're not ripping out your entire APS system to put this in. As you said, you can, you can layer it on top. Now, again, my understanding is while you, you know, in theory could, and maybe some people eventually get there, optimize literally from supplier, supplier to customer's customer, the reality of it is pr companies usually break the problem into smaller chunks, don't they? Kind of inbound and outbound maybe as, as two examples. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's a, one of the sort of slight misnomers. You know, when people first think of supply chain, they think of, you know, sort of their raw material all the way through to the final customer. But the reality is that no first sort of inventory optimization project stretches those boundaries. Companies will get there, but that's not where they start. Where they start is either raw materials through to the finished goods distribution center or the finished goods distri distribution center out to retailers. And the reason for sort of this break at the distribution center comes entirely down to the control in the company. Usually raw materials up to finished goods report up to, say, a VP of operations or a chief operations officer, whereas distribution center forward report up to someone, the general manager with profit and loss responsibility. And as we all know, when you do optimization, you make different decisions. And when you make those decisions, someone needs to sort of adjudicate disputes. So, for example, if we're reducing inventory at one location but increasing it at another, a very common thing in multi-echelon inventory optimization, that's going to please the person who's doing the reduction but displease the person who has to hold more. If they don't have the same ultimate manager, then those metrics can't get aligned. So, usually, we always start sort of either finished goods out through the retail or raw materials into the distribution center. Okay, uh, very well said. Uh, you know, the other thing, we were preparing a little bit, you know, for this uh, video, of course, and you talked about, you know, the two opportunities with inventory optimization, a strategic opportunity and a tactical opportunity. Uh, from what we discussed, I think most people think about I.O. in that sort of tactical level. How do I sort of immediately reduce inventory? But, but why don't you kind of take us through those two uh, vectors of uh, I.O. Uh, impact? Yeah, absolutely. When we think of tactical inventory optimization, that's optimizing every item at every location for every time period. That's a very large problem, right? 
That's a problem that to solve it has to be integrated into the planning system, has to be done in an exception-based way as part of your monthly SNOP planning process. So that is tactical inventory optimization. Strategic inventory optimization looks at a higher level. It's looking at which items should I outsource? Wh you know, which, where should I put postponement in my supply chain? How do I allocate a scarce inventory budget across the supply chain? These two models, these tactical models and strategic models, they work together. The tactical model is the pain point. It's the thing that people need to solve as part of their monthly planning process. But once you do that, it's what I call the virtuous cycle of inventory optimization. Then you can build on top of that the strategic work because now you've built this foundation where people trust the answers because it's running their planning system. But now you can solve a whole set of decisions that you couldn't do before. And that's what the strategic benefit gets you that you couldn't have. When you do this together, you get this virtuous cycle where you improve inventory results, not just on a monthly basis, but then with these step change improvements with the strategy. Very good. So it sounds to me as if it really gives you a sort of inventory what if, you know, capability that without this kind of a tool, you know, you just can't do except trying to brute force this with spreadsheets or whatever. And, and that's not going to get you too far. Um, kind of along the same lines, Sean, um, you know, when we think about inventory optimization we, or inventory generally, we think about taking inventory down. But the reality of it is with inventory optimization, it's more about right-sizing that inventory, isn't it? In some cases, you should actually increase inventory in certain areas, as you said, or even certain SKUs. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a case where sort of the supply chain failed. We've done ourselves a bit of a disservice by speaking so much about service level and safety stocks sort of outside of our own organization. You know, if we elevate the message a little bit more to, say, senior management, that's not the way that we want to communicate it to them. And I actually sort of in a tongue-in-cheek way like to say, if we, if we look at inventory optimization, we can go to any vice president of supply chain and tell them this following truism. You have roughly the right amount of inventory. You just have too much of some stuff and not enough of the other stuff. And if we sort of break that sentence down, it really does embody inventory optimization. You, know, you have roughly the right amount of inventory is true. You know, they, at a high level, they've balanced capacity and supply. But at a detailed level, they likely are running too low on some of the SKUs and they have too much of the others. What inventory optimization does is it right sizes all of these inventories. And by optimizing them, we get the right amount of inventory at each location in the supply chain. Surely that will be an overall inventory reduction, but for some SKUs, undoubtedly, we will have to increase them. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love that kind of introduction to the problem to the executive. You've got about the right amount of inventory. I think that's a very powerful way to think about it. Uh, I attended the Logility User Conference a couple months ago, I believe, uh, in, uh, in New Orleans. And uh, you made a very powerful statement there, Sean, at that conference where you said, you know, a few years ago, you committed uh, and realized that you had to truly and completely solve this inventory problem. That's a pretty bold statement from a software vendor. Why don't you take us through what you meant by that and what you've done to uh, reach that goal? Sure. Yeah, when I was a doctoral student at MIT, I was very impressed by, by this work by uh, Jack Muckstadt and Robin Roundy. It was a different area of operations research but they had really solved all the different variations of a particular problem. So when I got involved in inventory optimization, I had this theoretical idea that I really wanted to solve all the theory of inventory optimization. Now, as you can imagine, so if anyone has done this kind of work, that of course takes a lot of time. And at one step, you know, there's, there's trials and tribulations along the way. At one intermediate step, we had solved this very advanced portion of, of general networks, not fully complete general networks, but, but a good portion of it. And I was so excited by the work that when we implemented it at Hewlett Packard, I went to their launch day. So there I am, you know, at the launch day. I'm super excited. It's all going great. And we go to lunch. And I sit down next to someone. I've never met them. They've never met me. To them, I'm just the vendor because, you know, I'm not any, any part of HP that they know of. So this person looks at me and she says, you know, if we have to take the result from your model and sort of apply a, a fudge factor to it, we won't use it because we could just save ourselves the time and effort by winging it right from the start. And that really like hit me. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Uh, so this is sort of like how profound this was that we do have to truly and completely solve the problem. So I left that meeting realizing that not only do we have to sort of have the research part fully solved, but we also have to have the implementation part fully solved. And that has guided me ever since and guided our software ever since. 
Yeah, well, that's, uh, Sean, that's really pretty cool and a great way to kind of cap this off. There's a whole bunch of other directions uh, we could take this, but uh, we're out of time today. But why don't we get back together before too long and uh, keep discussing multi echelon inventory optimization. That sounds great. Okay, Sean, thanks for joining me today. Thank you.